the little islands that dot the Atlantic, there is none more picturesque than sunny Madeira, which suggests to us a garden in the sea. The story is told that Madeira owes its discovery to a romantic young couple who eloped from England in a boat that was shipwrecked upon its coast over 500 years ago. Although the young lovers found themselves in a veritable garden of fruit and flowers and singing birds, the hardships of their voyage soon brought their adventurous romance to a tragic conclusion. They died a few weeks after landing, but their companions succeeded in building a crude vessel in which they ultimately arrived on the coast of Portugal. The news of their adventure reached the ears of the Portuguese explorer, Zargo, who set sail immediately with an expedition which claimed the islands on June 1st, 1419, and named them Madeira for the crown of Portugal. And now, five centuries later, we arrive at Funchal, the capital of Madeira, which is still a Portuguese possession. It was here that Christopher Columbus came to claim his bride in 1473, and it was here that Napoleon rested while en route to his exile at St. Helena. The Caro Sledge is typical of Madeira. It was first introduced by a British army officer for the convenience of his wife, who was an invalid. The idea so appealed to the native people that they adapted it as their chief medium of transportation. Although automobiles are now trying in vain to compete with it for tourist patronage. The streets are covered with small, closely packed cobblestones, which receive a high degree of polish and also considerable grease from the lubricated runners of the numerous conveyances constantly passing over them. It is the duty of one of the teamsters to place a piece of grease-soaked cloth upon the roadway in such a position that the runners of the caro pass over it and thus oil their way along. At all seasons in Madeira, flowers bud and bloom and the air is filled with perfume. The women who throng the wharf on the days when a passenger boat has come in and who thrust bunches of sweet-smelling flowers into your hands, expecting in return a fraction of a penny, will that morning have made a pilgrimage up into the hills in order to pick them fresh for the business of the day. The Madeirans are devout Roman Catholics. They rarely stir from home, save to make a pilgrimage to some religious festival and in most cases living all their lives and dying on the soil of their forefathers. A large percentage of these people are the descendants of the famous explorer, Zargo, who was knighted and made the first governor of the island in 1425. Shortly after Madeira was claimed by Zargo for Portugal, the king ordered three young noblemen to go from Portugal to Madeira to marry Zargo's three daughters, giving them large grants of land, which are still in the possession of their descendants. When Zargo first arrived, this picturesque little island was covered with dense woods, suggesting to him the name Madeira, which means wood in Portuguese. To clear these woods at a place in which to build a settlement, Zargo ordered them to be burned, and according to Portuguese history, the fire once begun burned for seven years, reducing every tree to ashes. An excursion to the summit of Madeira's highest mountain and the descent by basket sledge along this cobblestone path affords the chief thrill of a visit to Madeira. After guiding the sledges to the foot of the mountain, the men carry them back to the summit, a distance of at least two miles. When we admire Madeira needlework in the smart shops of London, Paris, and New York, it is difficult to realize that much of it originated in these humble surroundings. After completing their domestic duties, the women and children sit outside their simple cottages, embroidering exquisite patterns within view of the blue Atlantic and the azure skies beyond. Embroidery, however, was not a native industry as regards its origin, for it was introduced in 1850 by an enterprising Englishwoman 
who established a school and taught all that she herself had learned elsewhere. So quickly did her pupils learn the art that it spread rapidly all over the island until it was christened Madeira work, and so it has been known ever since. While the women are thus occupied, the men busy themselves with work that is equally as well known, Madeira wicker work. As a matter of history, the wickerwork trade in Madeira owes its inception to an Englishman who brought out a chair from England and thought that in place of the natives hanging about and doing nothing, they might be taught something useful. This kindly thought developed and ultimately brought great profit to Madeira, for not only have the Madeirans copied the original pattern, but they have added charming and artistic designs of their own. Thus is history made. The completed embroidery and wicker work, which is not shipped abroad, is offered for sale at the little shops of Fun Cha. The average tourist ship that anchors in Fun Cha Harbor usually sails away with a generous supply of wicker chairs, tables, and embroideries. And it is chiefly upon this trade that the Madeirans depend for our livelihood. Apparently, England has had greater influence over Madeira than has had Portugal itself, for practically all of Madeira's important industries have been introduced and supported by British imagination and enterprise. Even the famous Madeira wine owes its perfection to the efforts of a young Englishman named Hinton, who back in the 18th century employed skilled winemakers from the great growing provinces of France and the German Rhineland to instruct the natives in the art of making wine. And as a result, the demand for Madeira wine eventually exceeded the supply. The revenue obtained from the sale of this famous wine has helped to build at least a few of the more elaborate residences which exemplify the Madeirans' natural love for things artistic. And it is here in this lovely setting that we say farewell to sunny Madeira, that little garden in the sea where the songs of birds and the perfume of flowers and the simple life of a kindly people, together with glorious vistas of land and sea, all blend into the cherished memories of a perfect day. And it is with these impressions that we sail from Madeira over cloud-laden seas to other lands and to other peoples.